We're at the U.S. Grains Council meeting in Omaha, and joining us, Gary Blumenthal, who is president and CEO of World Perspectives. Gary, one of the things you talked about, or really uh, focusing in on um, the world situation and the geopolitical uh, impact it's having on agriculture. Uh, maybe a lot of people don't think with everything going on, agriculture is really being affected. Well, it is being affected. I don't think it's being affected in perhaps as great a way as some people interpret, uh, but it can be corrosive over time. Is, is really the underlying uh, situation just the overall world economy rather than, say, these events over the last six weeks? Uh, that is clearly the larger concern. Uh, agriculture basically rides up and down based on macroeconomic growth, and uh, that is what we have to follow very closely is what are the larger impacts from a macroeconomic standpoint from all of this upheaval. Well, we've all looked over the years uh, to the emerging economies of China and India especially. Uh, are those um, the players that we think they are, or is there still, uh, are we still a ways off from them really uh, maybe being able to uh, uh, dominate that world economy more than, than maybe we thought they would be? I, I think the heartening thing is that uh, China certainly continues to manage itself uh, well enough that they can maintain 7% or better growth. Uh, they're, uh, with that kind of growth and increasing wealth, uh, they're going to want more food. They can't grow it themselves. So China actually remains uh, one of the brighter spots in the global situation. Uh, talk about some of those things you, you, uh, you did talk about uh, to here to the, to, the, uh, to the U.S. Grains Council folks. Uh, uh, it seems like we're, we're always trying to find ways either to beat the market down or, or bring them up and try to, try to find some answers. And it seems like uh, uh, this old uh, economy and, and really the, the, the world just changes almost on a daily, if not hourly, basis. I think part of the problem is we tend to look at things through a microscope and we don't see the forest for the trees. And so uh, we have to be careful about not over-interpreting developments. Uh, if we look at the Middle East, it's been in strife for a long time. Uh, it's certainly concerning events in uh, Ukraine, uh, but that's one of those things where their production may fall off a bit, but they're still, uh, it's a very, very, uh, productive part of the world when it comes to grain, uh, and so we'll expect them to not completely fall out of the business. One of the other things you uh, touched on was energy, the energy markets, the availability, and uh, it seems like uh, some of the uh, normal world players are back when it comes to uh, production. Well, uh, oil is one thing that is uh, greatly impacted by adverse geopolitical events. We've seen that time and time again. Uh, with the events this past weekend, uh, with us having to evacuate our diplomats from Libya, uh, we would expect that market to uh, have problems producing uh, oil now. And Iraq is certainly uh, leaves some uh, very big worries. And that's one of the interesting things. If we look at our current fracking for oil here, uh, if it weren't for that, I think the oil market would be in far more turmoil than we're seeing. What about uh, as we look down the road? Uh, one of the things you do, obviously, is uh, is try to uh, uh, look ahead uh, and see uh, some things that may be potential roadblocks. Uh, what are some of those things you're keeping an eye on? Well, I think uh, if we if we look at what's happening, where we're starting to catch up uh, supply with demand, we've got a big crop coming off. Uh, I think uh, it's a matter of do we have enough growth potential out there to keep the from becoming burdensome. And then, uh, you know, what is our longer term view about how do we move uh, what is a great productive capacity, but uh, we want to make sure that it actually uh, stays in sync with demand and doesn't overrun it as it has in uh, past bear markets. Transportation has always been an issue, uh, not only in this country, but of course as we look to, to the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, and I know uh, like Howard Buffett was one of the speakers at this uh, event talking about food security. Uh, I, do you, I assume that's one of the things that you also look at is, uh, as we all know, uh, a country that's not hungry is more likely to be more stable than others. Yes. Uh, food security is kind of a funny issue because there's not uh, a lack of food. Uh, it's not distributed well. But more importantly, if we look at the, the 37 most food insecure countries in the world and we look at the FAO categorization of the problems that they face, uh, yes, weather is a factor sometimes, but the more consistent problem is poor governance and corruption. 
And so it's really improving governance in a lot of these countries that's going to make uh, the big change in food, food security. Last question. Uh, there's been some talk among some folks, some countries about the World Bank, uh, if it's still uh, a relevant uh, tool. And uh, what's your take as, as you're kind of there and, and deal with them and, and deal with other countries? Uh, uh, you know, do you think that is still a viable, uh, a viable option? Well, the, the BRICS countries have just announced an attempt to launch an alternative. Uh, they basically do not like the rules that are imposed by the lender, uh, but they're going to find, uh, even if they uh, can get it together, that, that these rules are to protect the lender and they're not going to be w lending money willy-nilly. Uh, the World Bank, I think, will continue to have a role. I think we're beginning to question whether continuing to do things the same way makes sense, whether we need a change in our practices. If I just look at uh, U.S. Uh, development assistance, uh, you know, very few countries have uh, been developed heretofore right. with all this assistance, but we're starting to see some of the fruits of that coming about. Uh, if we look at growth rates in Africa, for example, finally they seem to be turning the corner, uh, and uh, it's a matter really of whether uh, we can get, as I said, the, the policy making fix in these countries, and that's where we haven't done a very good job in the past. Gary, thanks for your time. Yeah, my pleasure, Ken. Gary Blumenthal, the President and CEO of World Perspectives, one of those presenters at the U.S. Grains Council Board of Delegates meeting going on in Omaha. For AgView, I'm Ken Rogers.